Got a fifth generation Accord here. Have to replace the rotors on this vehicle. Now these older Hondas have uh, the hub in front of the rotor, so it's a little more work than your, uh, your, your standard rotor job. So come along, I'll show you how I do it. And if you work on a bunch of rusty stuff like these two guys do, probably want to hose everything down with penetrating oil before you get started. And David, thanks for the sticker. I appreciate it. Alright, I got the vehicle lifted up and I have it on jack stands. I got the wheels chalked. If you want to see exactly how to do that, I have an oil change video on this vehicle. You can check that out and see exactly where the lift points are and how I do it. Alright, I'm going to take my impact with a 19mm socket. I'm going to take the lug nuts off get this wheel off. Uh, if you don't have an impact, you're going to have to break the lug nuts loose while the wheel is still touching the ground. As you can see, I have the uh, master cylinder cap off. That way we can push the caliper pistons back in. So as you can see, we got the rotor here and then we got the hub in front of it. So it's, it's the opposite of how it normally would be on most Hondas. So these require a little more effort to get off. A lot of times what will happen is people will just slap pads on there and they'll leave the rotors alone. And eventually the rotors get bad enough where they need to be replaced and that's where this is at. Um, there's a lot of uh, vibration in the steering wheel. When you hit the pedal, you feel the steering wheel go like that. And so there's usually thickness variations on these discs so that, you know, as the car is driving, you know, like this, the wheel's going around. There's a high spot on these discs. As soon as it hits the caliper, it forces it back like that. And so that pressure goes back into the brake system and you'll feel it in the steering wheel. And sometimes it'll shake the whole car. And so these pads are pretty new. Yeah, they look they look very new so as long as the you know I don't see any issues with the pads we're gonna leave those alone we're just gonna replace the rotors today alright we're just gonna take this whole caliper off as an assembly leave the pads right in place and I'm just gonna stick a pry bar in there just gonna press this back a little bit just make a little room there now this uh, will come off the rotor easy and I'm just using a little pry bar for this this one's made by OTC and you can hit it all right, now I'm just going to pull the fasteners from the brake line and the ABS line right here. This vehicle obviously has ABS. You can tell by the, the line going right there to the center. So I'm going to pop this 12 millimeter one out. And then we got two tens here for the, that'll d disconnect the brake line. And then we got one, two, and I guess I'll take these out three, four, and that'll loosen up our ABS. That should give us plenty of room to spin this around. All right, we, we'll get that 12 out first. We'll just turn this. And we'll get the rest of the tens. And I'm just going to put these back where they belong so we don't lose them. All right, up next, I'm just going to take the two caliper bolts out. These should be 17 millimeter. I'm going to take this one out and then the one, the one down on the bottom. All right, you can see where the bolt is right here. I'm just going to take that one off. All right, now I'm just going to take the top bolt out here, and then I'm going to hang the caliper 
up on the, the strut, just on one of the coils on the strut. I'm just going to hang it like that. All right, I'm just gonna take this, put it in here. While I'm thinking of it, we're gonna spread the pads a little bit, push that uh, piston back in so we can get it over the new caliper. I'm sorry, so we can get it over the new rotor. There, that should give us enough room. And when you're pushing the brake calipers back in, you want to keep an eye on your brake fluid level. Make sure that this uh, doesn't overflow. If somebody's added fluid, which I don't recommend, but if somebody's added fluid or topped it off since the brakes were done, then there's a possibility it could overflow. So if that's the case, starts getting too high, then uh, let's take a turkey baster or a pump or something and just lower that level a little bit. All right, we'll straighten this back out. And then we're just going to loosen these four bolts up just so uh, later on when we take them out, it's easier. Much easier if we do these four bolts right now while it's on the vehicle. All right, now I have an impact to, to uh, loosen these so it doesn't matter if I'm not holding this. If you don't have an impact, you'll probably want to leave the caliper on, have a buddy step on the brakes, and then loosen them right now. Same thing with this axle nut because otherwise this whole thing wants to turn. But with an impact, you can see it's not a problem because all the force is being applied right here it doesn't turn the wheel so we'll just leave them barely loose or is that barely tight whichever way all right, now we'll just unstake that. It looks like it wasn't staked very well, but I'll just show you anyway. We're gonna use our little tool here from Schley Products. Just gonna put it in there. You can see it unstakes it. That way we won't ruin our axle. Now I've shown in other videos, you can spin these off and it usually won't ruin them, but we'll do what we're supposed to. Now you can see there's a stake on, well maybe you can't, but there's a stake on the other side right here too. So this axle nut has been used a couple times. Honda recommends you replace these anytime they're removed, so we'll be getting new ones. All right, we'll take our axle nut set from Gear Wrench. This is the 41650 model, and uh, should be 36 millimeter. We'll get that 36 millimeter socket out, and we'll knock that axle nut off. All right, this little guy is not gonna cut the mustard. We're gonna have to use the big boy. Oh, she wasn't that bad. And you can see the threads are not damaged. And let's make sure. Uh oh. Ah, that's tight. All right. Ah, that thing's stuck on there. We're going to hit it with an air hammer. Ah, we're good. All right. We got to get the bolt off this uh, ball joint. So we're going to take the cotter pin out and just have a pair of side cutters. We'll bend these straight. And of course, I can't get the top one. And if they get in your way, just cut them off like that. We'll be reusing these. I'm sorry, we won't be reusing these. It's not a good idea to reuse them. That's what's left of it. So I have new ones. We'll be putting new ones on. All right, this is a 17 millimeter castle nut. We'll just take our impact, pop it off like that. Now I'm gonna spin it back on. 
like that so it's flush. Now I'm going to hit right here with a big hammer. Right here, we'll use the old trusty Cook TC47BP. We're going to hit right there, and we're going to loosen this. See, she's on this one's on there tight. Nope. And we're gonna need a bigger hammer. Nope, she's stubborn. Plan B, and I pop, I put this on here to use this tool. And you can see we're loose now. So I guess the bigger hammer did do the job. I just didn't try it good enough. We're good. Now the reason I leave this on here, all the way up, flush with the uh, flush with the castle nut portion, is so when I hit it. In case my aim's not so good, I'd rather sacrifice this nut than tear up the threads on the ball joint and then we're replacing the ball joint too. So we don't want to tear these up. I'd rather just have to replace this if I hit it with the hammer and screw it up. That's why I leave these on. And I'm just going to take a break and talk about safety for a second. As you can see, I have the rims underneath the vehicle, not only on this side but on the other side. That's a secondary protection in case for some reason my jack failed. Or I'm sorry, my jack stand failed, uh, is a, another protection I could leave the jack in place. And if I'm hammering on something, I'm using eye protection. And especially in the case of an air hammer, I'm going to use ear protection. Very important. Alright, I have the castle nut off. And we have this loose, so we're good. So now we should be able to pick it up off the ball joint and pull it out from the axle. Being careful not to pull our, uh, our entire CV axle out. We don't want to pull the joint apart out there in or back in there. So we'll just pick it up and pull it out and spin it around. Now sometimes these just come out like a breeze. Sometimes they uh, they want to fight you all the way out. So we'll see how this one does. Oh, this one was nice. And then because we loosened up, uh, can you see that? Because we loosened everything up, we can spin this around like that. And you may want to position your steering wheel in a position where it helps you spin this around. But we just need it like that. And now we can get access to our four bolts right there. And yeah, as you can see, that's why I took, took all the bolts off. We want this nice and loose. We don't want any strain on this ABS line. And there's our ABS sensor right there. We're going to leave it in place because a lot of times you try to remove these after they've been in the car for 20 years. We're going to break them. So we're just going to leave it there, but we're going to work around it and be careful of it. And we're just going to remove these four bolts right here. Alright, so just using a 12 millimeter socket, pull them out. That's all they are, just like that. We'll just get all four of these loosened up and removed. There we go. Now, if you read the service manual, it tells you, okay, just remove it. Okay, yeah, right, Honda. Yeah, it's not coming out. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to hammer it out, and I'll show you how. All right, so in order to knock that out, we're going to use some sacrificial bolts. We're not going to use the bolts that came with the vehicle. And uh, these bolt, the bolt size on here, or the thread size is, um, what is it, 10 by 1.25. And I believe these are either 90 or 100 millimeters long. I don't remember. But what we're going to do... We're going to put these in place, in place of all four of them. We're going to run them all the way down. And as you can see, I got um, holes drilled in them, or just a little divot. And I'm going to put my air hammer right on there. And we're just going to go back and forth. And we're going to hammer the whole assembly out. So we'll just get all four of these installed. And in the case of these bolts, we need a 17 millimeter socket. 
We'll just run them in. All right, now we can hit them with our air hammer. All right, so wearing my eyes and my ears, just going to go back and forth with my air hammer. And you can see I have a pointed tip on here. I'm just going to go back and forth, hammer it out, and we'll knock the whole assembly out. And of course the air uh, compressor kicked on. Didn't kick on when I did the other side. But now we'll just remove these bolts, but I gotta make sure, I gotta hold on to the assembly now, because it will fall out. There we go. Yeah, it's going to develop rust right here. And that's what's going to hold this thing in. That's why we got to hammer it out. And if you look close, you can see the rust ring right in there too. And you can see that's what it looks like together. Now we're just going to have to flip this back over. And now, because we loosened these four bolts earlier, we could just pop them out and then we can separate this hub assembly from the rotor. And going back to our 14 millimeter socket, we can just pop these out. Now, because I have an impact, I could probably, I probably didn't have to loosen these up, but it's definitely easier to pop them loose on the car. And there you can see, well maybe you can't, but now our rotor's loose. Now we can just separate it. Let me turn it over and you can see. So if we try to just lift it straight up, it won't. It's kind of keyed. So we just need to, of course it's not going to cooperate with me holding the camera. You just need to turn it a little bit and take it out. You see how, because it's keyed, that's how you drop it in. And then we would turn it to get to the bolts. So that's all it is. Now we just got to get a new one on here and get everything cleaned up. And I'll tell you what, if you haven't used the old tub of towels cleaning cloths, man, these things work great. No, they don't sponsor me. I just use them because they work well. I really like these things. All right, using my angle die grinder with a coarse disc, we're going to remove the rust off this hub. We're going to remove it off right here, and we're going to take it off this ring right here. Also, it's mating surface right there. We're going to have to clean that up. And looking at this, this has seen better days. I think I'll put this new one on here. And of course, the air compressor is going to kick on, and this thing's loud. We're going to be using eye and ear protection. As you can see, I went ahead and cleaned the bearing up 
and put a little bit of a multi-purpose grease right around the ring there and then its mating surface I did the same thing and then I got a little bit of grease on the splines that'll make it easier than for the next guy who takes this apart which might be me all right now that we got everything cleaned up and ready to go we're gonna need some new brake rotors and here's the ones that I'm gonna install these are a uh, centric premium these are uh, these have a finish on them well we can take a look you can see they have the uh, coating right here to prevent rust I'll clean those up with some uh, some brake clean and then also we're gonna be putting new axle nuts on and so while we're right here let's see can you read that part number that's it right there that's the uh, axle nuts for this car I'm also gonna clean up the bolts on my wire wheel as you can see I already got these two and uh, now I'll get the rest of them all right now that we got the uh, rotor all cleaned up we can just take our hub assembly and made it together now just remember this flat part right here goes right there so we'll have to flip this around and drop it on and it's keyed so we got to make sure that it fits right in there so we can just drop it in place and then we'll just turn this so that our bolt holes on the rotor coincide with our bolt holes right there and we should be able to just lift it up and put these in just get them started. We want to get them all started by hand. Make sure they're not cross-threading. So we're good to go. And now we'll just tack them down, but we got to make sure we got to make sure we do it evenly so it doesn't get cocked. Do the final torque on the vehicle. All right, now we're going to take our new assembly. We're going to we're going to put it in place. And just remember, this is keyed, so it has to go in a specific way. You can see one side is longer than the other, and that coincides right here. So we'll just set it in place, and then we we'll grab our four bolts and we'll get them started on the back. So yeah, we can just set it in place. Make sure we hold it so we don't drop it. We should be able to start these bolts. Where are you? At? Okay. Trying to stay out of the way of the camera. So we always want to make sure we start these bolts by hand. We don't want to cross thread things like this. That makes a tough job even tougher. And you can see they're all started. And you can see that that bearing is in there nice and flush. And I'm pressing on the back side to make sure it's all in there. Now we can just take our impact. We can just bring these bolts in. What we, we just want to make sure that thing doesn't get cocked in there. That thing needs to be perfectly flat. So we're looking good. Now we can torque it. All right, the bolts that hold this hub assembly to the knuckle are going to be 33 foot-pounds, so we'll get these torqued down. And just like lug nuts, we're going to go, we'll go a cross pattern.
and it's not a bad idea because we're going four ways like that. Let's double check it. All right, we'll go ahead and get the axle put back in here. Sometimes it's a pain. Sometimes it flops right in, sometimes it doesn't. Come on. Once you feel them slide in, then you can just drop it on. And you can see it. Can you see down there? All right, so I dropped it down on the ball joint. So once these uh, engage, sometimes you got to twist it a little bit, and then it'll slide in, drop it on. I think I need some new gloves. All right, we'll put our nut on the ball joint here. All right, then we'll get it torqued. Uh, got it set to 36. So this is a 36 to 43 foot-pound range. So we just got to tighten it to 36 and then tighten it enough to put the cotter pin in. All right, so as you can see, we're just a hair off. We just got to tighten it a little bit more. And then we can get our new cotter pin in. You can see I just can't quite get it. Alright, we'll go ahead and put the caliper and brake pad assembly back in place. Of course, we're going to start those by hand. All right, we'll tack them down. All right, we'll go ahead and torque these caliper mounting bolts. They're 80 foot pounds. And seeing as we're right here, we'll go ahead and get all our. Uh, Brake lines put back, ABS lines.
All right, now before we forget, we're going to torque these four bolts, and we're going to torque them to 40, 40 foot-pounds. And in order to keep the rotor from turning, we're just going to put a screwdriver right in there. Alright, now with a new axle nut, go ahead and get this put on. We'll tack it down. Alright, now we'll go ahead and torque it down. It's 181 foot pounds, so we got the big boy out. And we'll keep our screwdriver in place to hold it. Alright, now we got to stake that down right there. And as you can see, we just got to get it bent over so it won't back off. And you can see I've ground that tip down so that I don't split this metal. Alright, before we put the wheel back on, we got to make sure we'll double check. Alright, we got this torqued down, we got these four torqued down, we got our caliper bolts torqued down. We got everything back in place. It's always a good idea to take a second, double check your work. All right, we'll go ahead and pump up the brakes while we're thinking of it until we get a nice firm pedal. There we go. All right, that feels good. And don't forget to put the cap back on. And now's a good time to clean things up and replace the brake fluid. As you can see, it's got new brake fluid now. Put the wheel back on. And we'll pull our chalk. All right, we'll go ahead and torque our wheels to 80 foot-pounds. And of course, now that the vehicle is level on the ground, we want to do one final check of our brake fluid level, make sure it's good to go. All right, now I'm going to take it out and uh, test the brakes, and then I'll do a series of uh, braking on them to uh, mate the pads with these new rotors. Then I'll be good to go. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video on how I do captive rotors on these older Hondas. And as you saw, I used a bunch of, you know, fancy schmancy tools here, but I could have easily done this job with uh, some basic hand tools and a big hammer and a jack and jack stands, of course. But, um, you know, I have the tools, so I'm going to use it because it makes my job, you know, easier and I can get stuff done faster. But, hey, in any event, as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.